He is practicing on us. <laughs> Maybe it'll work on Jude. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I can't see this. Can't see. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Acts chapter 15. We are going to be looking at verses 1 through 11. So starting here in Acts chapter 15, verse 1, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. Well, that was a downer right there. That'll be a revival real quick. All right, I know. <laughs> When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So immediately, you see, because there is a little dissension and disagreement, that the believers said, well, you need to go see the church elders about this. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phineas and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Isn't it interesting? When you don't leave your past fully behind when you follow Christ, it rears its ugly head. <laughs> and the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. All right. We're jumping into some disputation in the church here. And really, this is the first major kind of dissension that there has been since the beginning of the church and the beginning of Acts. There's been some concerns about a few things, mostly people. You know, I'm concerned that Paul really hasn't converted and he's going to have us all murdered. Those kind of worries. But here they have some genuine, like, wait a second, what's going to happen? So, in this passage of scripture, what do you see God doing what do you see man doing? Well, there's a big difference that's going on between the law and grace. Yes. Uh, Romans 10 4 <clears throat> talks about that. You're definitely seeing that that um, opposition of the law and grace. Yeah. Diane? Well, I see that God is one by one trying to take care of these misconceptions, dissensions whatever uh, that people are trying to put on the grace of God and salvation. He got, he got the whole food thing kind of addressed a while back and some other issues. And uh, But this, this uh, <coughs> circumcision thing keeps popping up, it seems like. And so I think he's just kind of cleaning house. He's setting them straight. This is what it is. It's not that. You don't need all this extra, you know. Right, yeah. It does seem like, yes, it, it, right, exactly, so, yeah. yeah. You read yeah. Romans 10, 4, I'll do that. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Right. Bottom line. That's right, Christ That's right. is it. Gail? Even though the leaders disagreeing there with, through the spirit of being with 
put that aside, but he's still coming together. Isn't that cool how God was doing that work in his people? They were so sincerely wanting the will of God that they were able to take these things that they disagreed about and handle it without just falling apart, you know, <laughs> without having a church split. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Anyone else? Um, isn't it interesting, as I pointed out as I was reading, that the, the believers that had been Pharisees, um, they still were part of the sect of the Pharisees. And I think it kind of illustrates here in, in Scripture that, like, if, if you carry with you identity from your past into your present with Christ, it's going to affect your present with Christ. Mm -hmm. And it is not going to necessarily be for the good. I mean, Pharisees were, were studied in the law, and you might think that that would be very helpful to have all of this scripture memorized and all of these laws that you've studied. But you see here that it was actually not terribly helpful. And of all people, Paul, who was raised at the feet of Gamaliel and was a Pharisee, you know, was the very one that was kind of teaching in opposition to that. Because as John brought up, he had a deeper understanding of the grace of God and what Christ was bringing about in the church. I want to be careful that I don't cling to. I've seen so many people, and they walk with God for years, but because of who they were before, they cannot embrace their identity in Christ. They just can't leave it behind. They bring up things from the past. They... You know, have, they just can't release that and be like, mm -hmm. I, that is under the blood and mm -hmm. it is gone mm -hmm. even from the mind of God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had that issue. I was raised a Catholic and I, I had to take all those ritualistic things from my mind. And it took a while to just go away without thinking about it once in a while. You know? Yeah. It's a, it's a total change. Yeah. yeah. Right. Any other thoughts about what God and man are up to here? Well, just um, this, the simple fact that as they were traveling, they made sure in Phoenicia and Samaria to tell the Gentiles um, about, um, tell how the Gentiles had been converted and this made all the believers very glad. Yeah. You know, they weren't just going to, you know, focus on getting that um, job done that they had to do with the, um, in Jerusalem, but... Yeah, yeah. So that I was love that. that was neat. They're always on the positive, and it caused great joy unto all the brethren. I love that it caused great joy. That that the brethren weren't saying, "Well, I can't believe that those people got yeah. saved," <laughs> <laughs> but instead they were just so delighted that the Lord was saving Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So marvelous! That is marvelous. Yeah, I like the fact too that God knows the heart. You know. That, yeah. that was emphasized, and, and of course, um, the heart of purifying their hearts by faith. It's, it is about the heart. Yes, yeah. and God does know the heart. Yeah. Deb? <clears throat> the Pharisees were still seeing themselves in a position of authority. <clears throat> necessity for believers to have humility. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you wonder why they didn't like have that kind of discussion <laughs> to learn this like when they were saved like that that didn't come up that didn't show up mm -hmm. in their behavior in their attitudes. 
when they were, you know, saved, yeah. and that somebody didn't talk to them, and you know, one of the main apostles or disciples. Right. And they they may have. We we just don't know. But they they were holding on to their office, and uh, this may be a good example of, of why I leave politics alone. You know, it's it's you can't draw that uh, those rules and those laws into your relationship with Jesus. Your relationship with Jesus has to take center stage in your life, mm -hmm. and it's got to transform everything about you. Right. And if you're trying to bring all this mess that you've drug mm. through your life yeah. into right. it, right. you're going to mess up that relationship. Yeah. And yeah. so when we leave that, that mess, that stuff, mm -hmm. at the altar and just focus on mm -hmm. our Savior and, and focus on His plan for us, he will reveal it in his time, and it, it doesn't happen right away. We tend to want to fill in those blanks ourselves, mm -hmm. and we fill it in with our mess instead we, of we waiting do, for God. We do, but how do we tell the difference between um, the the religiosity, perhaps, and I and I do believe that the way that politics it consumes a number of people that it is that it is their religion. I think that there is. And the same thing with certain, you know, social movements and certain, there's people worship at a lot of different altars, right? Mm -hmm. So how, when you've come from all these different backgrounds and you come into a walk with the Lord and you have been baptized and you have been filled with his spirit, how is it that you find what it is that he wants to do and differentiate it from what perhaps you want to do. Well, I, I think this is a good example right here of, of that. You, you bring it to your church family, and they can help guide you if you don't have that discernment yourself mm -hmm. and show you that discernment. Right? They didn't have this at the time. Right. Right. So the Bible is, is our, our source. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. The Word of God is our source. And to your point, like there are, this is a comprehensive word, but there are things that come up in our lives that we think, wow, this isn't really directly addressed. And it's like, well, to a certain degree, everything really is addressed. And when yeah. you get right back around to, um, Facing Christ, then those things can be exposed as what they are. And when you're open to it, then even the Pharisee inside you, you know, can release those things. Mindy? One thing that we see a lot of times in people is that they take just a tiny little <coughs> nibble of what they're trying to consume and apply to their life instead of taking it as a whole and seeing <laughs> seeing the whole cakes, reading all of the word, taking, you know, back for them, mm -hmm. it was getting all of the scrolls, the testimony of Jesus and his life and the things that he did and the testimony of the disciples after he rose and ministered to them and, and taking it all as a whole. The Pharisees were going back to the Old Testament of the law um, and they weren't really looking at everything else that had happened Right then, and that's why they're they're the counseling of of the people who had been there, seen it, done that, to say, okay, well, I see what you're saying here, but this is what's happened since then, mm -hmm. and we need to go away from just that and eat the whole cake mm -hmm. and not just one little piece of it. And you see what that's exactly what Peter really was expressing. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, but you remember that God didn't show any. I didn't have any issues with filling these Gentiles with the Holy Ghost. And, and his point that he was making was they didn't have to do all this additional stuff in order to experience the infilling of God's Spirit. So clearly, God is okay with us not continuing that. Yeah. Verse nine. Robin? Yeah, I, I think, I think that's, it, it, it speaks to, to so many bodies and things, but... It's number one, it's also talking about how it is a, it's a process yes. for us to truly understand the acceptance of God's grace. Because yes. even the Pharisees and all, they still, it's that issue of it can't, 
it still can't be just that. Can I just <laughs> right. take the great? I got to do There's something. There's got to be I, something I, I, I got to do. It has yeah. to be something else That's I got to do. Yeah. Because you just telling me I just got to accept that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, see, I need to keep this law and then that law. And what it's really saying is I still have to do my part to do salvation. Uh -huh. So it's really, there really still is still, we're not understanding that there's a process of growth in your level of truly accepting grace and mercy and understanding yes. salvation. That's a one-time process of the mm -hmm. salvation. But to truly embrace it and really understand it is your growth in Him. Mm -hmm. You start in the middle and that's of the time, and then you come to the meat of the Word. And then you really begin to get to that point of understanding, oh, new mercies I see, yes. great is thy yes. faithfulness. Yes. But that's not going to happen in 24 hours. Right. So yeah. really understanding what that really means. Right. Yes, absolutely. Amen. That's I'm very well said. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a growing process. Yes, totally. And it's cool to see mm -hmm. the way that these folks dealt with that process mm -hmm. and and walking through it and not just throwing a tantrum and leaving. Right. You know? Yeah. I love absolutely. that. Yeah. Mama. Um I think that the reason why the apostles were not just telling the Pharisees to throw everything out the window. Yeah is what Sister Robin said. They, they were letting them grow. Oh, I like that. Yeah. The problem was that some of the brethren had come down and started trying to tell mm -hmm. the people at Antioch, mm -hmm. this, you know, you're going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. You're going to do it our way. Yeah. You know, that's what the problem was. Yeah. And so they didn't, they, because they were Gentiles and they, you know, Right. All so, this stuff was foreign to them. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times new babes, mm -hmm. older saints will try to make new babes just like them. <clears throat> yeah. Come right. up to this standard. Yeah. Mother Wilson said, try to make them just like them. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just like them, and that's not what the Lord wants, mm -hmm. you know. That's mm -hmm. not what the Lord wants. Yeah. And so... Yeah, it's it's hard sometimes for older saints to realize they forget, like Sister Robin was saying, they yeah. forget. Yeah, I'm not here because of my goodness. Right, <laughs> that's right. right. I'm that here right. because of His grace. Yes, absolutely. And it doesn't matter how long I've lived for God, I can still fall. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But for His grace. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My righteousness is still as filthy rags. Right. Right. Amen. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, I, I want to kind of give myself up as an experience because my, you know, when I first came, I was talking to um, Kevin and about um, evangelism and wanting to gather forces and that kind of thing, go out on the, on the, the street or the sidewalks or whatever. And, um, but since we have decided to do what we're going to do and uh, reading the Bible in 90 days together and um, Gail and, and maybe someone else and um, it's, you know, because I've never read the entire Bible. I've <clears throat> studied a good portion yeah. of it, but never, probably not even all, all the way half of it. But, um, and, and so like, and then I have other studies that I do plus come here and studies with scripture with a couple other people at different times. And so it's like, I really want to know the whole Bible. I want to have people who are really, uh, like you've studied it for so many years all the way through. So there'll be so much that I can really glean and really be matured more. Right. And, um, and then, and, and I also have um, what God has shown me a certain um, thing to do. Um, and that's going to take a lot of my time. And so as things progress, then I can, I can do evangel I can, you know, spread the gospel, spread the word of the Lord, what the Lord is doing, the word of my testimony, yes. anytime, all right. the time, Amen. whenever. Mm -hmm. And so, but at some point, maybe some other folks will want to do that and we'll yeah. get together and do it. But I just wanted to say I'm not ready. Yet. <laughs> and I've got, you know, I've got things to do. So. And I'm excited all about it. So that's so great. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Deb? Um, 
In Ephesians 4, I'm going to skip a little, but Paul is talking about um, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And he says, and to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. And then a couple of verses later, some of those gifts are, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes. Yeah, so, and just a couple of verses after this says that we may grow up mm -hmm. into Christ, who is the head. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't call any of them Pharisees or Sadducees. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it is. And, and so you see the beautiful orchestration that God put together for his body. And I like what uh, Mom was saying when she said... Um, we're all going through the process, and none of us are going to come out of that process exactly alike. In fact, the opposite is going to happen. Even if we went through the exact same process together, we will still come out completely different. Because that's the way the Lord wanted his body. He didn't want a body that was all just mono-whatever. He wanted it multi-everything. And so what we come to the Lord with and allow him to work in us is what brings the most beauty in his body. And those are sometimes hard to remember things when, you know, when folks come in that are just, they, they weren't raised in any kind of church and they don't have any kind of teaching. And y'all, some of the folks that come in, are they are so precious. Their little faces are just, it is like, a sponge just soaking in the word like they have never heard it before. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I'm just amazed because they're just drinking it in and it's like a fire hydrant, but they're trying to drink it in because God is doing a work in them. And I think, Lord, you're doing this mighty thing in the last days like, like has never been done. And it's so exciting that he planned on us being here for it. <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> John? Verse, verse 9. And put no difference between us and them. Mm. He's saying it. We're all the same in this. Mm -hmm. And God has to resolve circumcision. Because yeah. it, it can't go on forward. Right. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go down the street and talk to some guy... He's going to accept the Lord, and when he's done, I say, by the way, you got to be circumcised. I, I have he's a nice year. <laughs> he's going to say, i got to think about this a little bit. <laughs> you got to say that. I mean, it's not like there's going to be a, a lot of men in the church after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that is the way it is, too. Like, you know, I love that, that it was circumcision that literally was what the, the church got a hang-up over. Yeah. Because... Circumcision was literally, in the Old Testament, the sign of your commitment to God. Yes. It was your covenant saying, I am promised to God. And what was happening is, is God was saying, that's no longer the sign of my promise. My promise is my son. His death is the only circumcision that is needed. It is a circumcision of your heart. And that is what is so powerful about it. He didn't want anything, as Sister Robin said, he didn't want anything to get the glory for what his grace was going to do. Amen. You know, you don't get to take credit for your religious um, acts. Same thing people do with baptism. Yeah. You're not, you, well, you say, but you never got baptized, well, you're not really saved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that if we're not careful, then uh, we will rely too heavily upon what we're doing instead of what God is doing. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Years ago, I grew up in Chicago, and there's a lot of Catholic churches. There were Catholic hospitals, and you were born in a Catholic hospital. You were circumcised. They just did it without asking. You, they just did it. Oh, good. Well, that's different. It's better than waiting until you're older. <laughs> 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 well, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move into our uh, spec. What about sin to avoid? What do you see in here in this passage of scripture that would be sin to avoid? Traditions of men. Traditions of men. Very good. Yeah. Which made, which made them a stumbling block. Right, which made them a stumbling block. That's a very good point, Bridget. So the variation that she put on that is, you know, there are some traditions that it's absolutely okay for you to keep, but you do not get to decide that that's what it takes for other people to be saved, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so that, says, that's really good. It says in Colossians 2, 8, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, mm -hmm. according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. And I was just looking up other scriptures. It's all there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and to your point, the blood of Jesus has yeah. taken all that other away. You don't need to go to that rug right. anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the next scripture right after that says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, Jesus is... Yes. He's the he's one that shows... Yeah. What God is. Yes. Shows what his personality right. is. Shows what every facet of his being. So you don't need all the philosophies and mm -hmm. and vain speaking of man because you've already got it illustrated, illustrated in Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah. That's good. Any other sin to avoid here? The Pharisees are criticizing God's plan mm. because the Holy Spirit was in these other people. Yeah. And yet they still criticized and stayed that way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we don't want to be critical of what God is doing, even when we don't understand it. Yeah. We want to be like, okay, God knows better than I do. <laughs> I know that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Glory. And to extend grace to people as they're coming along. Yeah. They might be babes and they might have been there for a long time, but they, mm -hmm. they weren't taught properly. So you have to be patient and, and yeah. show them the word. But yeah, but with that gentleness. Yeah. yeah, and let love do its process. Mm -hmm. Deb? Mm -hmm. Paul himself had been a Pharisee, and he had an incredible testimony. And yet these Pharisees, obviously didn't believe him. They right. are disputing with Paul and Barnabas about the right way to do something and not believing because Paul had testimony that he was sent to the yeah. Gentiles. Yeah. And um, they weren't willing to kind of listen to authority, you know, because they had to yeah. go to Jerusalem to settle it. Yeah, right, yeah. And yet Paul and Barnabas had been sent, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we need to be careful not to allow rebellion yeah. to take place in our hearts because we don't understand what's happening. Yeah. All right, what about promises to claim? I think that um, this is a great illustration of how all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord took this situation that have, could have went really bad. Yeah. And like somebody was saying, could have been a church split, could have been really big problems. Right. And the Lord smoothed it over, made it into where they had a decision. Yeah. And from this, this was the route where Paul went on, if you go through his epistles, mm -hmm. they all go back to this. Yes, they mm -hmm. do. They all go back to this, yeah. about why there is no difference between the Gentiles and Jews. Yes. 
And, and it's interesting that you bring that up because he even uh, disputed with Peter later on yeah. mm -hmm. because Peter, having stood up under the anointing of the Spirit and having spoken this, having known it, they, he still mm -hmm. sometimes fell back on that traditions of men mm -hmm. and everything. And we do that. Mm -hmm. Like we do that. Like we can speak the absolute true word of God out of our mouth and six months later somebody's got to speak it back to us. <laughs> can I ask a question? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't no, interrupt you. Okay. Well, it says here that um, when Paul's speaking, he says, um, Gentle, okay, now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? Because they did bear it. They did have, um, they did well, have he meant in so, the generality yeah, of the law. The oh, you, the no law. matter how many of those rules that you they tried never, to keep, they you never, just couldn't. Gotcha. And even if you could, even in keeping all of those rules, you still were a sinner. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's yeah, it's a lot to bear for sure. Yeah. What about examples to follow? Do you see any examples that you that we need to be following? Go to church leadership if there is division or strife or problem. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Church leadership. Yeah, that's a good point. Like there needs to be a coming together, you know, to the church elders and saying, hey. What do we feel about this? What's going on with this? Instead of yeah. sowing seeds of discord that could cause people to people's relationships to fracture mm -hmm. with the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Peter, Peter rose up and spoke out. He didn't just sit back. He spoke up to make God's plan work. Mm. Yeah, otherwise, he'd, he'd still be arguing. <laughs> 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 well, it was a big issue. It was, it was a huge there was issue. strong feelings yeah. on both sides. You know, this yeah. wasn't a minor issue. Yeah. You know, yeah. Somebody had to stand up and make sense out of it. Right. And I, I think it was actually a special calling that was um, <clears throat> upon Peter, chief among the apostles. I mean, you see, James as one of one of these really, really powerful church leaders. But when it came to um, <clears throat> sort of that loosing of things in the spirit and binding things in the spirit, often you see Peter being the one that says, guess what? The Samaritans can receive the Holy Ghost also. And then they all receive the Holy Ghost, you know? Yeah, he's the one who always yeah. speaks out. Right? right, yeah. Yeah. So And so certainly stepping out in faith and anointing of uh, the spirit, we want, it, we want that example to be a part of our lives for sure. You know, one thing, too, is so funny. It's, it seems like a simple something, but I, I'm trying to find, I think this might be NIV version, but in the 12, when it's talking about the whole, whole assembly became silent uh -huh. and he listened. What a novel idea. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and he's silent and actually listening. That would be very novel. That is very good. That's very good. What about commands to keep? Do y'all see any explicit or implicit commands uh, in this passage of Scripture that, that, that need to be kept? Show grace. Yeah, that's good. Be understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it interesting that showing grace and being understanding is almost the polar opposite of that verse 5 where it's like, we've, we've got to command them to keep the law of Moses. Whereas our commandment is, as Jesus said in the book of John, I give you a new commandment, that you love each other so much that people cannot believe it. They literally cannot believe it. And they say... You must be my disciples because nobody could love each other that much. You know? And that's what was happening in the church here, y'all, is that they were loving each other so much that they were learning to show grace 
in the way that God had shown grace to them. And they were able to receive grace. That's good. Mm -hmm. And they were able to receive grace. And so grace would be where that Paul and Barnabas, even though had they not been part of establishing the church at Antioch, is that is that true? They were part. <clears throat> They were, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, so this, so they would be the senior leaders, really. Right. Mm -hmm. And yet, right. yeah. they had the grace to not insist on what they, you know, they, they're right. teaching, and they actually accepted the mission or whatever to go to Jerusalem. Yeah. And, and you know, talk with the elders and uh, other apostles. And so, yeah, I, I think that's an important example command or yeah. example to I agree. To I think it, that was such a huge it was it was an example um, because they were showing it is more important for us to be in unity um, as, I, as that passage of scripture that Dev read in Ephesians unity in the faith or unity in the spirit until we all come into the unity of the faith right it's like well we may have some different beliefs but let's keep the unity of the spirit you know, and so they were willing to go and to submit themselves to church leadership in Jerusalem, and that, that was a really important thing for the church to experience that unity. Because that's the way denominations start, right? Is when these church leaders decide you have to do something this way, and these church leaders decide, well, you got to do it this way, and then all of a sudden you've got a different church everywhere that's teaching things just a little bit different. And then they don't have fellowship with one another because it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Their love for the, the, these, this group of Pharisees was enough that they didn't want to escalate it and continue an argument. That yeah. they went to Ju Jerusalem, de-escalating the, the, the issue yeah. and allowing that grace to That's cover. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, now they were, the, the Pharisees were in Jerusalem. Yeah, the these, other believers were in Antioch that actually sent them. Right, it was Jerusalem. after they came to Jerusalem. They came to Jerusalem in verse 4, and then you see in Jerusalem is when the Pharisees, the sect of the Pharisees, rises up, and then the apostles and the elders come together to consider it. Yeah. You know, they're like, well, well let's, let's talk about this. Gail? With so many people, I mean, to this day get stuck on Old Testament law, mm -hmm. yeah. and so seeing like how it was like, um, foreshadowing like how did spiritual things become like in the New Testament. Yeah. And then like to this day they get so stuck on the law instead of like really wanting to just like, you know, this one thing is love one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, so that kind of impedes the movement of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because they're so stuck on everything has to be. You're so right. And it's funny because a lot of people um, think, oh, well, you you just think, oh, you should just love people. And then, and that's, well, isn't that convenient? No, it isn't <laughs> convenient. It's the most hard thing that you do. I would much rather tell everybody to look a certain way, act a certain way, speak a certain way. That would be way easier. You could write those kind of rules down. But loving people is so hard because everyone is different. And adjusting and realizing that God's showing his grace to all of us and the way that looks in my life is different than the way it looks in your life mm -hmm. and me showing love to you in a way that you can receive it may also look different mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that 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 is definitely way harder <laughs> than just trying to follow a list of rules <laughs> all right any closing thoughts anyone seems like Everybody, all of us here, there, there are things we have in our back of our mind that we really believe in the spiritual realm. And there's no, there's no way to back it up. It's just something you just kind of believe. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty easy to try to influence other people by what you personally believe. Right. Instead of what's really here. Yeah. 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 You can see that just by the differences in the churches. We're, yeah. we're all Christians, we're all, but we're all different. We're like, we shouldn't be all different. Why are we all different? You know, <laughs> uh, you know I, I think we're all different because the Lord really did make us unique. Yes. And we have a tendency towards difference. 
The thing that we're supposed to be, though, as you point out, John, is that we're supposed to be in fellowship with one another as we are going through the process, as Robin pointed out. We're going through the process. We're not going through the process all in the same building uh, or under all the same teaching. Or at the uh, same rate. Or at the same rate. Very good. Uh, but we are all in process if we are all pointed towards Christ and trying to be more like him. So that's that's our goal, man. Yeah, and look at it this way. We are all put here to help each other get to that point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Be it good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. But you, but you learn also you learn you learn to appreciate difference. That's the distinction. Yes. yes. You have to learn you learn the difference only becomes a negative when you attach particular items to difference. Right. When difference becomes superior, when difference becomes right. inferior, and difference, you understand, I, I would never want to be on the same. I like yeah. distinctions. I yeah. like difference. You know, I wouldn't <laughs> want, that would be quite boring if they all be yes. the same. Yeah. So, yes. so it, there, there is distinctions that are there. I think we're all uniquely made. Everyone has a different fingerprint. And to me, yeah. that's God's design. So we, we want to be different, you know, and even that component of of why it's hard to love others, mm -hmm. sometimes the component of that hard others is because we still have to learn to love ourselves mm -hmm. as God loves us. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'm trying not to go there, but okay, no, no, just, just things that I just finished a, a, a workshop on, on emotional wellness, the yeah. journey that starts within. So it has to be, again, when you, when you know that difficulty of loving others, it has to come with what, how do you love you? And yeah. understanding and really ever praying, Lord, let me see what you see in yes. me. Yeah. Yeah. And, allow, yes. and allowing that to then come out, and that allows that love for others yes. as well. Absolutely. I, I mean, it's very easy to see that so often people um, are the most critical of those who are most like them. <laughs> and it's really weird because like you'll see somebody they'll be so oh, critical of someone and you'll think uh, y'all are like basically two peas in a pod <laughs> and it's like well it uh, comes down to that you know exactly. maybe the way that you feel about the person that you are is reflected upon yes. the person that is like you and it's not <laughs> great <laughs> it's not great that reflection is it's not in a positive way Amen. yeah Man, if we could ever just receive who God says that we are yes. and grow into that, yes. boy, that's, it's going to be amazing. Amen. It's going to be amazing. Like one of those beautiful stained glass windows where everything is different, different shape, different color. It makes it but if you yes. back up, it's a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful picture. Allow the sun to come through and yes. shine. Yes. <laughs> shine through. Yes. So Woo. That's right. Amen. Well, I need it. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell y'all this much right now. There was not even a little gentle breeze blowing when that apple fell off that tree. <laughs> not even a breeze. <laughs> well, let's just take a moment and thank the Lord for this time that we've had together. Lord, we thank you so much for this, Lord, your word, for all that you are doing in us, for the things that you are birthing in us and growing in us, for the process that we're walking through, Lord. Let your sweet spirit continue to work that in us. Help us to release everything into your hands, to be who you called us to be, and to love one another as you called us to love one another. We thank and praise you for what you do, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus.